Hey guys, Jerobi Tech here. And we're taking a look at the Moto Edge Plus or Moto Edge 30 Pro, I believe it's called in other markets. Uh, but here in the US, we get the Moto Edge Plus 2022. And um, this is actually a really nice phone. Um, it's, it's probably not gonna be a phone that is bought by a ton of people. I just have this, I have this funny feeling that people are going to overlook this phone and probably buy a Samsung um, or get an iPhone and really not look at this phone. But I think it's actually a really, really good phone. Now, the Moto Edge Plus is kind of a little odd in the pricing, uh, in my opinion. That is the only area where I think Motorola could have tweaked a little bit. Um, this phone uh, was $899, I think, when it first came out. Uh, but now, currently, at most stores, it is uh, $999. So it's going to be $1,000. So it is competing with other uh, top-tier flagship phones from Samsung, uh, Google, OnePlus. You know, it, it's up there in price. It is certainly not a mid-ranger by any means. Um, but what you get for the money <clears throat> that I do like is you're getting the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Uh, you're getting a nice AMOLED screen at 6.7 inches, 1080p, HDR10+. Um, and this screen is really, really nice. I am very impressed with uh, what Motorola has done with the screen because a lot of the Moto phones that have been coming out, honestly, have all been LCD. Um, the budget phones, the mid-rangers, a lot of LCD phones. So it's nice getting a legitimate uh, AMOLED screen here. And it's beautiful. The colors are super saturated and vibrant. It's got deep blacks. I mean, it is just a really, really nice screen. It's just got the little hole punch in the middle for the front facing camera. Very slim bezels all the way around. And I like that the bezels are even. Um, I don't know why, just, it, it doesn't kill me if some phones have a little bit of a chin at the bottom, but I prefer it to all look even like this. It does look nice. It's not the slimmest bezel on the face of the earth, right? It's not the, it's not slimmer bezels than what Samsung is doing um, or what uh, Apple is doing, but it does look nice. I like the symmetrical bezels all the way around. I like just having the hole punch in the middle. This is a really nice looking screen. It is very nice to look at. And to top it all off, it goes up to 144 Hertz for the refresh rate. So, um, you know, if we, uh, if we come into, the display settings and of course I kept that saturated but if you want to do natural or mess with the color temperature a little bit you can um, I think it dulls it down quite a bit going to natural in my opinion I prefer the saturated look but you can change that uh, and you have the option to do auto 60 Hertz or 144 Hertz um, so I've kept it on auto because personally, I've said this in other reviews, I don't need 120 or 144 hertz. It's really not that important to me. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with 90. Um, that's for me, I'd rather 90 just because it helps with the battery life and you're still getting a smooth looking screen. That's just my opinion though. I know a lot of people love 120, would prefer 144. So if you are that kind of person, then you can go and set this to 144 hertz which I'll leave it on here for the review. And uh, it's super smooth. It looks fantastic. And with the Snapdragon HN1 and eight gigs of RAM in this, I mean, it is just a, you know, buttery smooth phone. You're not gonna have any issues <laughs> moving around the UI, opening and closing apps. It is really, really good. Um, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. Just using this phone compared to say the Pixel 6 I have or the S22 Ultra I used to have, this feels amazingly smooth. Like the 144 Hertz is really, really nice to have. And having the top tier Snapdragon processor, I'm very happy Motorola went in this direction. Uh, they didn't try to, you know, lower the specs too, too much and try to come at a different price point. They are giving you very good specs here. And I think it's just been fantastic. Everything works so well. Now, <clears throat> if we move on from there and we look at the build of this phone, you can see you have a speaker at the bottom, you have the USB type C port um, and uh, the, the SIM card tray. Uh, and then at the top, you also have a speaker up here. Um, the sides are actually, believe it or not, plastic. 
So that was kind of an interesting decision, uh, in, in my opinion, that Motorola went with. But I don't care too much because it does make the phone a little lighter. And I think the phone would have been really heavy had they made this some kind of metal. So I don't mind it. Um, and obviously you have the power button with the fingerprint scanner on the side and the volume rocker. And on the back, you have that uh, triple camera array, uh, which we will talk about more <clears throat> here in a second. Um, but I don't mind the build quality. Um, I think the uh, the glass design with plastic on the sides, I don't mind that. I think the, the back design is kind of cool. I don't know if you can kind of even see the, uh, the gradient effect that it does have. Uh, obviously this is the Cosmos blue one. You can also get it in like a whitish color. Um, I think I would have preferred the white, but the blue does look nice. And I usually put a case on my phone, so that really doesn't matter to me too much anyways. Um, but overall build quality, I'm perfectly fine with. It's not super heavy coming in at 6.91 ounces. It's not like crazy, crazy heavy. Um, and I would say that it's pretty even with its weight. So I like it. I don't think it feels like too cumbersome in the hand. It's not like weighing you down. It's a good size and it's a good, and I'll say this, if you compare it uh, actually to the, um, uh, the, the Pixel 6, just so you can see size wise, between the two phones, it's really not much bigger than the Pixel. I'd say it's almost the same size, maybe slightly wider, um, but the Pixel 6 feels a good amount heftier. It's definitely a heavier phone. So <clears throat> um, I like this size. I think it's a totally usable size. It feels comfortable in one hand, which I really like. Um, it doesn't feel like an unwieldy giant, you know, fablet of a phone, <clears throat> even though it has a 6.7 inch screen which I really like. Uh, it does have NFC. Um, it's very pixel-like in the way it looks, honestly, when we're like scrolling through the interface. They kept it very close to stock Android. Only a few little, you know, obviously you have the uh, Moto touches in here, which is cool. Um, and I, I love all the different Moto gestures and stuff like that. You know, like uh, the chop chop for the flashlight. Um, and I think they all work really well here and they work very fast. Um, so I'm very, very pleased with the Moto gestures, I always love them on every Moto phone, and I hope they continue to do that and keep those things in there because it's really fun to use, and I actually use them. A lot of phones have gimmicky features that I don't use. The Moto gestures, I actually really like. Um, or was it? Uh, uh, I think it's a three-finger screenshot. I like that one too. Um, and all of these work really well. Now, <clears throat> if we're moving on uh, to the uh, the battery, the battery has been very, very good for me. Um, I've been using this phone uh, for a week now and the battery is really, really good. I have had no issues with it. Now I've kept it at auto. So personally, that's just what I felt comfortable with. I didn't need to force the 144 Hertz. So, you know, take, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. If you do force the 144, obviously expect to get slightly less battery life than, uh, than I experienced, which I thought was pretty good. Um, but overall, I'd say they did a, a fantastic job. I don't think anyone's going to have an issue uh, trying to make it through the day with this phone. It's definitely an all-day phone. You can pretty much use it however you want. Now, will you get two days out of it? Uh, maybe if you put it at 60 hertz, which I did not do. Um, I kept it at the auto because I do want a little bit of a, ref of a faster refresh rate. I do um, prefer that. Uh, but this phone does have a 4,800 milliamp hour battery. It did come with a 30 watt fast charger in the box, which is very nice. It does also have wireless charging, which I really like. Um, I think Moto did a good job. I don't think anyone's gonna struggle to get through a day uh, with this phone. Um, I basically didn't worry about it. I just used the phone and it lasted me the whole day, watching YouTube, sending messages, calls, GPS. Really had no problem and heavily using the camera. I was using the camera a lot, which usually kills the battery pretty fast on most phones. And this one did fine. So, you know, depending on where you put it at refresh rate rise, it should, you know, it'll change it a little bit. But I think overall, no matter what you pick, as far as the refresh rate, you're not going to have an issue uh, getting through the day with this phone. I think it is uh, very, very good, um, easily an all-day phone. I wouldn't say it's a two-day phone, though. I would not say that. I would say it's definitely an all-day phone. You're going to make it through the whole day. You know, you're going to bed, let's say, at you know 11 or midnight. You're going to make it through the whole day from the morning. You will have to charge it at night, though. I do not think this is a two-day phone. I, I think people will really struggle to do that unless you're a very light user. I don't think you're going to make it um, all the way to... Uh, to uh to two days so just keep that in mind you know it, it is very good battery life but it's not a two-day phone um uh, you know i always turn the battery percentage on i don't know why some phones have this off when you first turn on the phone 
I like to see the battery percentage. I don't know. It's always, it's funny to me. I always have to dig through and turn that on on most phones, but I prefer seeing that. Um, so yeah, so the display is very good. The battery life is very good. Um, the build quality I'd say is okay. It's definitely not, you know, top tier. It's, it's not metal around the sides, but I'd say overall, it's a nice looking phone. I do like the way it looks as I bang into the camera. Um, now, as far as the, uh, the, the cameras are concerned, um, let's see what we're working with on the back here, because it looks like, oh, three cameras and you would be expecting at a thousand dollars that okay, you're getting a, you know, a standard, an ultra wide and a telephoto. That's not quite what you're getting here, unfortunately though. So what you're getting is a 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide with autofocus and a two megapixel uh, depth sensor. So a little bit of a bummer there. I'm not gonna lie. I am the type of person that does like having a telephoto camera on my phone, especially if I'm gonna be spending a thousand bucks at least a two megapixel, a three megapixel telephoto. It's a bit of a bummer that Motorola did not give us that. You just have digital zoom, I think up to 10 times with this phone. Um, that's a bit of a bummer. I'm gonna say that's my that's probably my biggest con with this phone is that there is no telephoto camera. For me, that's my personal biggest flaw with this phone. Um, you know, you can go ahead and yeah, you can zoom up to 10 times. And it's okay, it's okay digital zoom. It's, it's not bad, um, but it's still digital zoom. And I would say like the the um, the Pixel, for instance, I would say has better seven times digital zoom than the Moto Edge uh, Plus has uh, 10 times digital zoom or even seven times. I think the Pixel 6 looks better. Uh, it's just as clear and sharper. I think uh, Google did a really good job with the digital zoom on that one. And I'm still bummed out that the Pixel doesn't have a, a, a telephoto camera. I think it should have. I, I don't think they should have only put it on the Pixel 6 Pro, but but regardless, the Pixel 6 does have better digital zoom than this does, and I'll show some samples when I'm uh, putting the samples on the screen. Um, but so some some of the good things I'd say standard shots uh, are very good. They take pictures very fast. There's no like shutter lag. I'm not noticing anything annoying. The camera app always works. You are going to get, um, you know, a good amount of options that Moto throws into a lot of their phones. You'll get some extra ones in here. Obviously, you can record up to 8K, which is nice. Um, and if we go to the extra settings, um, you know, Motorola always does throw in some fun stuff. Um, you do have slow motion, dual capture, portrait, night vision, you know, all the stuff they usually throw in, group selfie. And my favorite is always the ultra, ultra resolutions to get some really high quality photos. Um, so here's what I found that's very interesting with this phone. So I'd say standard photo quality uh, with the with the standard 50 megapixel is very good. Um, good dynamic range. Uh, it's very sharp. There's good detail in the photos. I like the way that Motorola did the processing with this phone. Um, the ultra wide, I thought took very good pictures also. Slightly worse than the standard camera, but not by much. It's, it certainly doesn't take bad pictures with the ultra wide. Um, you know, good dynamic range, good colors, slightly slightly worse, obviously, in low light, which I'd say is most phones, that is the case, that you're going to get worse low light photos with the ultra wide. Um, better low light photos with the standard camera, but still not the best low light photos. I would say Samsung and iPhone and Google have better low light photos than this does. That's probably one of the weaker points with the phone, but it's not bad. It does not take bad low light photos by any means. And sometimes I actually liked um, the way the, uh, uh, the the colors looked better on the uh, on the moto. I think it I think it was more realistic of what the scene actually looked like versus some of the other flagship phones. And then you also get a macro mode using that wide angle um, since it has autofocus and you can um, get pretty dang close actually, which is very very cool. Um, and I do like that it has this, and I think it is a good macro mode. My only issue, and this is a really weird thing that I found out, my only thing is it seems to be cropping in on the wide angle camera or like digitally zooming for the macro mode. So the shots don't quite, in my opinion, look as good um, as some of the other Moto phones that I have used. Now, obviously this is like a very low light example here. So the macro camera doesn't do great in low light, but and there's no ring flash or anything like some of the other, other Moto phones have like the G100. But what I found, I think I was actually getting better pictures for macro when I went in turned it to ultra res, the 50 megapixel, and then go to wide angle, you can still get in close. And in my opinion, you're getting a way better picture. Like it's just like a super high res 
50 megapixel macro camera, which is so much better than the digitally cropping and pixel binning uh, version of the macro mode that Motorola gives you. So that's a little trick I'd say to use. If you were into macro photography, uh, go to the ultra res and go to the ultra wide and it has autofocus and you can, you know, you can get in real close to different things and just take a, take a macro picture that way. And it's 50 megapixel resolution and it looks fantastic. And uh, I'll show you, I'll show you guys some examples here that I have. Um, I was just super impressed with, uh, with how good it was. Um, here's a picture I always like to pull up this one. This is a good example. So this is, so this is with the macro mode which was, which was fine. It's, it's actually a, a pretty darn good macro photo. But if you notice, the Anne is a little blurry if you zoom in further. It's not as high of a resolution picture. Decent. But when I went to the 50 megapixel mode and I used the ultra wide, I just feel like I got such a good shot. I mean, you can see the little pieces of pollen on the ants. And I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm going to be honest. So as you can see, it's a little further back. You can definitely get closer with the macro mode, but if you go to the 50 megapixel mode, ultra res, and then go to the wide angle, you just stand a little further back, but you can zoom in further in my opinion and have a very sharp, really nice photo. So I very much liked using that mode. Now, just for like, uh, you know, uh, standard shots, again, I think it does a really good job. It, it takes a sharp photo, it looks nice. It is a little, you know, saturated, I will say that. They definitely went more the Samsung way of things and saturating everything. Um, but overall, I think it does take uh, really good pictures. They're sharp, the focus is very good. Like I said, it snaps the picture quick. You're not waiting, there's not a ton of shutter lag. I really have very few bad things to say about the camera other than I'd say the low light is not quite as good as the flagships from Samsung or from Google or the iPhone, but it's not bad. Like as you can see, oops, didn't mean to do that. As you can see here in this low light photo, um, this is actually a pretty good photo. There's actually a good amount of detail on my cat's face and it's not a bad photo at all. Uh, but then I also took this one, which kind of looked worse. So as you can see, it was a little hit or miss for me because this one, I mean, there is like severely lacking detail on him where this one is just like, Wow, that is a much better photo. So I don't know, it's kind of hit or miss for me with the night mode, but it's not bad by any means. And I think some people are, un there's not many reviews for this phone. I've checked on YouTube, and there's barely any reviews for it. So, but if the few reviews I did find, I think people were a little bit too harsh on the camera. I think the camera is actually very good. Um, and there's only, I, I, in my opinion, very few flaws with it. Um, but again, if you're looking at the, you know, just these macro shots, here is with the macro mode it's you know it's an okay shot and here's with the 50 megapixel ultra wide and as you can see there's just so much more detail i mean it is insane how far you can zoom in with that mode i i will go as far as to say this is some of the best macro pictures i've gotten from any phone in the last year um with the 50 megapixel ultra res using the wide angle not the macro mode um i think it takes way better pictures than most of the uh samsung phones um, I mean, these are just really, you know, just take a look at that. It's a really good shot. And just, I can zoom in super far into it because it's 50 megapixels. Now, obviously that's going to take up more storage, but this phone has 512 gigabytes of storage, which is pretty awesome for a thousand dollars. You know, I mean, yes, it sucks. There's no telephoto at that price, but you are getting a lot of storage that other phones are not going to give you for that much money. So there's pros and cons. There's trade-offs. Um, yeah, I'd say overall though, you know, again, with the main camera, it, it takes a pretty good picture. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of these shots. Um, and I'm gonna post them up now. So what we'll take a look at is we'll take a look at a bunch of samples and you guys can just breeze through them and uh, see for yourself how the, how the shots look. I thought it was pretty good, but you guys let me know below what you think. I'm gonna put the photo samples up right now.
test. All right. So again, as you can see, I don't think there's anything wrong with those photos. I think they're actually very good. And I think it honestly went toe to toe with the Pixel on most of the daytime shots. Again, the Pixel uh, 6, I think, was definitely better in low light, though, overall. Not by a ton, but overall, it was better. And I would rather use this, the Pixel 6 uh, and the Pixel 6 Pro for low, low, low light photos. Um, video camera is good, as you can see in the, in the clip I posted. Nothing wrong with it. It takes a good video. It's, it's smooth. It's stable. Um, the, I thought the focus was good. The dynamic range is fine. It's a solid phone. I mean, really, honestly, it's just going to come down to how do you feel about not having a telephoto? I, I'd give it a very good grade, though, as far as the camera is concerned. I liked it. I had a lot of fun with it, especially with the macro shots and the full 50 megapixel mode. Now, when we're looking at the fingerprint scanner being on the side, this is my absolute favorite placement for the fingerprint scanner because it's excellent. <laughs> it is it is just, it is so fast and just so accurate. Look at that. I even went up here, which I usually don't do, and it still captured it perfectly. I mean, it's really good. Um, and just to, you know, kind of kind of give an example here, let's see how it does uh, versus the Pixel. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot faster. Um, it's excellent. I also put my other finger in there. It works every single time. I'm not joking when I say it basically works 10 out of 10 times. I think all phones should put the fingerprint scanner in the side the way Moto did. It is just phenomenal. I prefer it a million times over the uh, in-screen, which I personally just don't like uh, because it hardly works most of the time for me. There we go. You, you got to do it right on the Pixel. And I love the Pixel 6. I think it's a phenomenal phone, but you got to do it right on the Pixel. Where this one, I feel like I'm basically like accidentally opening it because it's just such a good fingerprint scanner. It is so, so accurate. I mean, guys, it's fast. Probably one of the best fingerprint scanners I've ever used on a phone, period. It's really, really good. Now, um, when we're looking at um, the phone overall, you know, what are my thoughts on it? I would recommend this phone to someone who doesn't care about telephoto pictures. Like if you don't care about having a telephoto lens, I would recommend this phone to you. It's an excellent phone. I just think it's really good. I've had so much fun using this phone. It's been buttery smooth. The battery life's been good. The screen is beautiful. Um, you know, it's a really good phone. But my only other issue, right? And this is a problem again, that will only be for some. You're either going to hate this and not want the phone at all, or you're not going to care like me and you're going to still want the phone. If you have AT&T or Cricket, it looks like there is no 5G. You're not going to get 5G with this phone, unfortunately. Uh, you're going to get 4G LTE. So for me, I do not care about 5G. I never use it. I turn it off. I'm not a 5G person. I, I think it kills battery life. I don't really get much 5G signal in my area anyways. I just prefer not to use it right now. I know down the line, eventually 5G is obviously gonna be the, the number one thing, just like 4G is. But right now, I don't think we're at that point. So for me, not having 5G, I don't care. It helps with the battery life. I don't notice a difference whatsoever. I just don't care about it. But I do wanna put that disclaimer out there. If you have AT&T or Cricket and you want 5G or need 5G, this is not the phone for you. Or at least for, as far as I can tell, I wasn't getting 5G and a lot of articles I read said, you won't be able to get 5G with AT&T and Cricket with this phone. So take that for what it is. I wasn't getting 5G, but I don't care. I usually turn it off anyways. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. If that's a problem for you, then this is not the phone for you. Um, but for me, I don't mind. A signal strength has been fantastic. Wi-Fi strength has been fantastic. It works with Android Auto. I've had no issues. Everything has been really, really good. I think this is a solid phone with a solid camera, solid battery life okay build quality um, but overall if you're not bothered by not having a telephoto and you're uh, not bothered by the lack of 5g on at and and cricket it's a great phone uh, what i will do is i'll go in here let's go to uh, uh what do i want to go to i want to show you guys the uh, the speaker really quick um, i don't know why i clicked on that let's go to let's go to this guy and let's just uh, take a listen to uh the speakers and uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the uh the samples right now
think it has very good speakers. I think they've, you know, they say it's like the Dolby Atmos, whatever tuning. I don't know. I think half the time that stuff doesn't really matter. I just care about what it sounds like. And to me, it sounds really, really good. I think it has excellent speakers. They rival those of the Samsungs and the Googles and, and iPhones. I think it's right up there. It's very, very good. Um, haptic feedback on the screen um, has been fine. I'd say it's on par with most flagship phones. Um, you know, it's it's good. It's I, I'm not a big person with haptic feedback. Like, I don't care. It's not something that I'm like, oh my God, the haptic feedback's so bad. It drives me nuts. Like most of the time I turn most of that off. But when I was using it, it's, it's good. I'd say it's flagship quality. Um, I can't say it's the, maybe the best, but it's definitely right up there with the other flagships. I don't think anyone's going to complain about the haptic feedback on this phone. So I think Motorola did a lot of good things and they also, and there's a couple of cons in there. So if you're looking at this phone, can you deal with not having the 5G if you're on AT&T and Cricket? And can you deal with no telephoto camera on the back? Those are the things you need to think about because otherwise I think this is a phenomenal phone and I like the direction that Motorola is heading and I'd like to see if they add more flagships to their lineup, which I heard they might. There might be like an ultra version of this phone. Um, which who knows, maybe we'll have a telephoto camera and higher specs and more RAM, you know, whatever, uh, a higher res screen. I'm curious to see where Motorola goes, but I'm happy with the direction they are headed. They're, they're getting real close because this is an awesome phone. I really like it. So if you can, if you can deal with those two issues, this is a solid phone guys. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. Any comments again, leave them below and please always, uh, you know, subscribe, like the video. Let me guys know if there's any other phones that you'd like to particularly see, and I'll see if I can get them on the channel. And again, I appreciate you guys watching. See you later.